tracks, tracking in complex sensor systems. In this presentation, I'm gonna talk about fusion of time of flight and time difference of arrival for 3GPP positioning. This work has been published in the 19th Fusion Conference and presented in Heidelberg, Germany, 2016. Hi, this is Kamyar. I'm an early stage researcher at uh, Linköping University working on TRAX project. I will first give an introduction and problem formulation of this work. Then, the problem in noise-free geometric fusion framework will be presented where analytical solution to the snapshot positioning problem is derived. Afterwards, I will describe stochastic fusion in which measurements suffer from random noise followed by the simulation result and conclusion section where the performance of the derived estimator is analyzed for two different scenarios. In 3GPP LTE systems, a reference signal is a predefined signal pre-known to both transmitter and receiver. Uplink reference signals are those in the direction from mobile station to the base station, while downlink reference signals are those in the reverse direction. In total, five different varieties of downlink reference signals are defined in LTE systems. Since LTE release 9, the positioning reference signal or PRS and cell specific reference signal or CRS are used in user equipment assisted positioning methods, meaning that using these reference signals, users equipment could measure the distance from base station and provide them either in a periodic fashion or on demand basis. These being said, we have simulated an LTE deployment as presented in these figures. We assume that the mobile station is moving on a predefined trajectory which has a flower-shaped structure as depicted in both figures with dotted blue lines. The flower shape of the trajectory is selected to excite key aspects of positioning based on time of flight and time difference of arrival. It can be a relevant reference scenario for comparative performance evaluations. A total number of seven sites are deployed with equal intersite distance. Each site consists of three different cells covering a hexagonal area. The serving base station and the neighboring ones involved in the positioning process will change depending on the location of the mobile station. We assume that the serving base station is the one that has the smallest geometric distance to the mobile station. Similarly, the two neighboring base stations are defined to be those which are geometrically the second and third closest ones to the mobile station. With these assumptions, it is possible to define areas identifying which base station is providing time of flight measurements and which pair of base stations are detected for TDOA measurements as shown in the left and right figures respectively. Interestingly, the areas for time of flight measurements define hexagonal cells, while the areas for the detected base station pairs for TDOA measurements define parallelograms. For example, the area where base station S1 and S5 are detected for the TDOA measurement is defined as the parallelogram having corners defined by S1 and S5. In the rest of this talk, we consider two different scenarios described in the next few slides and derive and compare results of both. In both scenarios, we restrict ourselves to two-dimensional geometries and convert time of flight and time difference of arrival measurements to corresponding range and range differences. Geometrically, this means that the time of flight measurement can be represented by a circle around the serving base station, while the time difference of arrival by a hyperbola with FOSI equivalent to the two neighboring base stations, as depicted in this figure. The mobile station positioning problem then becomes a classical circle and hyperplane intersection problem. The first scenario assumes that three base stations are involved in the positioning process as shown in this animated plot. The serving base station is assumed to provide the time of flight measurement given by the black circle. The next two most favorable base stations are then detected by the mobile station to form TDOA measurements given by the black hyperbola. Traditionally, Positioning is considered to be enabled when the mobile provides measurements of three different base stations. 
Second scenario investigates positioning based on time series of time of flight and time difference of arrival measurements gathered from two base stations only. In this case, only two base stations are involved in the positioning process, where the serving base station provides the time of flight measurement, but now the TDOA is measured based on signals from the same serving base station at the neighboring most favorable one. Assuming a deployment with hexagonal cells and base stations located at the center of each cell, as described in previous slides, together with an equivalent intersite distance capsule D between all cells, the calculations can be considerably simplified. Let capital X sub i and capital Y sub i for i equal to 1 to 3 denote the a priori known base station positions, and let capital X and capital Y denote the unknown MS position in some global coordinate system. We then transform the base station positions and MS position into some local coordinates given by X sub i and X respectively. The transformation of the three base station scenario into a local coordinate system is depicted in this slide. The local X axis is chosen such that the two neighboring base stations S2 and S3, which are detected for the TDOA measurement and also for focal points of the hyperbola, are located at plus minus cap T half respectively. The equal intersite distance D then would easily give the location of time of flight base station as well. Further definitions of hyperbola-related parameters given in this figure are the semi-major axis from the origin to each vertex which is denoted by A and the conjugate axis of the hyperbola which is then given by 2B. The exact values of these parameters as a function of ranging measurements and intersite distance are given in equations 1. R1 denotes the noise-free range corresponding to the time of flight measurement of the serving base station and R32 denotes the noise-free range difference related to the TDOA measurement of the neighboring base stations. Then, the solution of the circular and hyperbola intersection problem is equivalent to solving the following system of nonlinear equations for x and y as given in equations 2a and 2b. In case of two base station scenario, the idea behind the transformation to local coordinates is to align both stations on the x-axis, meaning that the transformation is performed such that S1 aligns to plus D half on the x-axis, and the neighboring base station S2 is located at minus D half. The noise free range and range difference measurements are then defined as R1 and R21 respectively, even in equations 3. This slide illustrates such a transformation and also provides equations for hyperbola parameters A and B given in equation 4. The intersection points would then be dependent on the distance between two stations at R1 and R21 as given by equations 5 and 6. In this section, we consider the more realistic assumption that the time of flight and time difference of arrival measurements are affected by noise. In particular, we assume that the MS position solutions provided in the previous section are affected by measurements corrupted by additive noise. Let Z denote the vector containing time of flight and time difference of arrival measurements. Further, let E denote the noise vector which is assumed Gaussian distributed with mean E bar and covariance matrix R. The generic MS position solution provided in the previous section can be then expressed as the mapping function G. This mapping nonlinearly relates the stochastic vector Z minus E to the MS position X. Since the mapping G is nonlinear, the corresponding MS position will be non Gaussian distributed. Hence, the MS position estimation problem can be casted into the problem of efficiently approximating the mean and covariance of Gaussian random variables that have been transformed through nonlinearities. In this work, we restrict our analysis to a first order Taylor approximation of the nonlinear mapping around the measurement vector Z. For the three base station scenario, the measurement vector is given by Z1 and Z32, where Z1 denotes the noisy range measurement from the serving base station S1, and Z32 denotes the noisy range difference measurement obtained from the neighboring base stations S3 and S2. The corresponding measurement models are of the form given by equations 9 and 10. Similarly, for the two base station scenario, the measurement vector is given by Z1 and Z21 where Z21 denotes the noisy range difference measurement obtained from the neighboring base station S2 
and the same serving based station is 1. The corresponding measurement model is given with equation 11. Altogether, the position estimator XAT is then be given by using noisy measurements instead of noise-free measurements in solutions provided in previous slides. The proposed TT1 estimators introduced can be applied to any generic setup of base stations as long as the intersite distance D is the same for all base stations. In order to assess the analytical position solutions of the noise-free measurement, we compute this for each point on the flower-shaped trajectory being covered by seven base stations as described in the problem formulation part. The moving mobile station reports ranging measurements to involve base stations. The measuring base stations are defined by their distance to the target and are not fixed throughout the whole trajectory. At each time instant, we first transform the global coordinates to a local coordinate system for which solutions have been provided earlier. The estimated positions is then transformed back to the global coordinates for positioning performance metric computations. These figures illustrate that most of the time there are two solutions at each position along the trajectory for noise-free measurements. Additionally, the incorrect positions seem to be mirror positions defined by the geometry of the scenario. In order to evaluate the performance of the TT1 estimator, we calculate the root mean square error RMSE, of the estimator. For the measurement noise standard deviation, we assume a value of 8.5 meters, which coincides with the value used in 3GPP LTA systems. We consider the true positions as prior information in cases when two solutions exist. The prior information is used by the estimator to select the position solution that minimizes the L2 norm between true position and that point. In this way, we avoid the position ambiguity and evaluate only the stochastic contribution to the position error. In a real scenario, however, the position prior shall be provided by tracking filter rather than established solutions. As it is presented in the left figure, the positioning error along the trajectory varies between 11 to 18 meters using TT1 estimator and measuring three base stations. The Kramer raw lower bound CRLV for this scenario is also plotted to represent the lower bound to be achieved. In the figure to the right, a scatter plot of the estimated trajectory is plotted on top of the true trajectory. This slide represents the RMC and CRLV when two basis stations are measured. As expected, it has less accuracy than the case with three basis stations. Additionally, there are seven regions where the estimation error is much larger and is of the magnitude of above 100. These points correspond to the geometry which might be mitigated with a tracking filter. Thus, a tracking filter has a large potential to assist the snapshot estimate as studied in this contribution and this is the subject for future work. The scatter plot is again provided in the right hand side figure. Additionally, it is interesting to note that there is always at least one solution in case we assume noise-free measurements. However, this is generally not true when having noisy measurements. The Gaussian noise may result in a smaller time of flight circles or shift the TDOA hyperbolas. In the noise-free measurement case, having only one solution corresponds to the case when the hyperbola touches a circle at a single point. In this case, having an unfavorable noise realization might move the hyperbola outside the circle so that there is no intersection at all. To conclude, fusion of time of flight and time difference of arrival measurement systems for positioning purposes have been investigated in this paper. The problem formulation is inspired by the standardization decision in 3GPP LTE which will make these types of measurements available with rather good accuracy. The analytical solution to the intersection of the circle and hyperbola coming from two measurements together with constraints of solutions have been proposed. The results of the proposed TT1 estimator have been compared to the kramer rao lower bound. Prior information could be given by a tracking filter such as EKF or a particle filter to assist the snapshot estimate and increase the accuracy and reliability that is considered as the future work. At the end, I would like to thank you for watching this video. For more information about tracks, please visit our site at tracks.u20.nl.